In my opinion, lighting is one of the most important aspects of interior design. In this video, I'd love to talk about the color temperature of light, layering lighting in a space, and different types of lights. When we talk about color temperature of light, we're really talking about how red or how blue a light is, or how cool or warm a light is. People think daylight is very warm light because the sun is yellow and shining, when in reality, daylight is very cool blue light. Candlelight or fire is very warm or red light. One important thing to remember, other than daylight and candlelight, all light is artificial light. Now different types of light have different color temperatures. K stands for Kelvin, which is the measured temperature of light. The lower the Kelvin temperature is, the warmer the bulb is, and the higher, the more blue it is. How we perceive our surroundings and feel in a certain temperature of light relies heavily on our human experience. Some people feel fluorescent light bulbs are cold and sterile because a lot of cold and sterile environments use fluorescent light bulbs. On top of them being a cooler temperature of light, some people don't want these kind of lights in their home. But it is because most of our houses use incandescent bulbs that we may feel this way. But in reality, fluorescent light bulbs are much closer to our natural daylight. Incandescent light is our common household light bulb. The color temperature of incandescent bulbs is very warm at around 2700 K. There's also a reason that candlelight does create a cozy, warm, and intimate environment, because it is the warmest color temperature of light that we can produce. It's only been a few years since we've started using LED light bulbs in our home over incandescent bulbs. Which brings us to LED light bulbs and why, as a society, we have made the switch to them. This can be a very deep subject, but in short, LEDs produce less energy. LED stands for light emitting diodes. And up until recently, this type of light was only available in very cool light, which is why people were apprehensive to make swaps of LED lights from their incandescent bulbs in their homes, making the blue light seem uninviting and sterile. We've used warm artificial light for about a hundred years in our homes. So we equate warm and inviting homes to those warm light bulbs. The good news is they've made advances in LED light bulbs to create warm light. So the switch to an LED bulb shouldn't affect the mood or atmosphere of your home, but it might bring your electric bill down by consuming less energy. You may have heard the term lumens before, and that is the amount of light emitted from a light source. The brighter the light, the higher the lumen measurement. So LEDs are about seven times brighter in lumens than an incandescent bulb, which means their wattage can be much less. The average lifespan of an LED light bulb is also much longer at around four to six years. I often say in my designs that I'm choosing a certain light to layer the lighting in my space, and I would love to explain what that means a little bit more. When I say layer lighting, I don't mean stacked on top of each other like a pancake. I mean horizontal and vertical layering of light. Generally three types of lighting in a space, and that is task lighting, general or ambient, and accent lighting. An interior with all three is considered a space with layers of lighting. Task lighting would be in the ceiling or under cabinets pointing down to light up our horizontal surfaces to task on. Down lights can be many things these days. They can be box fluorescent bulbs, they can be can lights, where the aluminum can is in the ceiling with a light bulb, but they also now can be slimline LEDs, which is the most common that we see installed today. These do not take up much space in the ceiling. In a lot of kitchens, we see soffits, which were created specifically for our can light or for our box fluorescent bulbs. With these slimline LEDs, soffits are being ripped down right and left in kitchens. General or ambient is considered a multi-directional or spherical light, lighting up generally the whole space. If I'm going to have down light, meaning it's on the ceiling pointing down, I'm also going to make sure that I have horizontal light or spherical light in the space. This can be done with lamps, sconces, pendants, and chandeliers. A lot of times you'll see me choose sconces for a room makeover because they don't take up floor space or table space, but they still give us that horizontal or spherical amount of light in the room. My first choice would be plug-in sconces for practicality's sake, but they do also come in battery powered ones as well. Layering the lighting in a space horizontally and vertically is also best for our complexion. If you've ever wondered why chandeliers are hung lower over the table, it's to give our faces light as well as our surroundings and the people that we're talking to. If we only had down light in this face, it does create lots of shadows on our complexion, which isn't the most attractive look. Therefore, when we have conversational areas like dining tables and living rooms, we want to make sure that we have plenty of spherical light shining on our faces as well. For more intimate spaces like bedrooms or home offices, I do like to have more of a diffused light. This means light with a shade that won't create any hot spots for our eyes or glares. It's not super comfortable to lay in bed with a light bulb blinding you. 
accent or mood lighting is exactly how it sounds. It's just to create a look or feel in a room. Oftentimes we see this in over cabinet lighting. The cone of light or color temperature that it shoots on a wall can be considered part of your decor. In school, we used to call up lighting an accent light, meaning that it's only lighting up on the wall to give the room a certain mood or feel. Investing in the lighting of your home will always pay off because it has a much farther impact than you may think.